Scott, good to see you. Yeah, the opportunities are becoming a, a little bit more limited than they were in the past couple of weeks, obviously, with the market rallying. That being said, I agree with your opening comment. Oil kind of stepping out of the way uh, and not pressing to the downside. That's allowing for some visibility in a lot of the sectors to move higher here. So I still view this as a buy the dip uh, overall market. You're looking for and mining for opportunities. I think in the last couple of days, you're mining for those opportunities in some of the places that we had not been in the last couple of weeks, which obviously led you to the FANG names. There are other opportunities that you want to kind of find within those sectors. But still, your approach to this is buying the dips. I think that's the way to stay. It's interesting that you say that, um, Kerry Firestone, because that seems to be a developing narrative uh, right now. You had Mike Wilson with us yesterday suggesting you could get a pullback. But you should buy the dip there. Credit Suisse is out today. They expect near-term consolidation. However, they would buy into weakness, and they give a number of reasons why. City says, is the bear market done? They say no. But what is the bear market checklist saying? They say, buy the dip. Do you agree? I, I say you, you've got a lot of things in that question. Uh, yes, we would buy the dip. We think we're in a trading range, perhaps, because we're in limbo. We're waiting for all sorts of things. We're waiting to see what companies say they're not going to report anything good, and they won't have much guidance, but we'll hear commentary. We're waiting to see how places open, such as Georgia, Denmark, Germany. We're waiting to see what kind of therapeutics we have available in the next few months, what the clinical trials are going to show, and whether we can hold to that efficient ratio they're talking about staying at one so that people aren't getting infected at a rate that would start to increase the likelihood of an outbreak again. So this range I think is comfortable and we have days like yesterday when oil you know which has fallen 40 percent this month from already very low levels put people into a tailspin and they start worrying about selling their winners. Not a bad idea when you have companies like Microsoft and Netflix and Amazon with big runs. We had a 28 percent S&P rise from the bottom. It wasn't created equal and the big tech and digital platforms had extremely strong runs over the last four weeks. Mm. So taking some off the table isn't a bad idea and adding to names if they fall, if they report something that's uh, very uncomfortable for investors, then I, I'd say do that. Mike Wilson, by the way, did think that the low had been set back in March. He said that the liquidity crisis that we saw just fell apart uh, and the market uh, just imploded, and he felt comfortable that that was a low that might stand. Right. So, Pete, it's no wonder that... I agree with that. that. It's